Hey everyone, it's uh, Warriors NRL Fanatics. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. And I uh, was supposed to do this one yesterday, but um, unfortunately, um, um, you you you've had a, you had other plans, so we're we're doing it this afternoon. Um, are we going to preview the Raiders Warriors match um, between the Canberra and New Zealand Warriors? A uh, game being played in Christchurch on Friday night. And uh, yeah, joining me uh, is um. A special guest from the Blake and Pork podcast, um, a massive Canberra Raiders podcast. If you guys haven't heard it already, go and check that out. It's on the Apple platforms as well. But it's great to have you on again. I had you on last year. It's great to have you on. And it's great to welcome you back on the channel to talk about this game this week. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, doing good. Glad to be back. I think this is actually my third, my third appearance. I think I've been yeah. on the last few years. So yeah, always, always love coming on and um, good to talk to you. And you know. It's always been a good game, Raiders v Warriors. I think over the years they've always been had some great clashes. Um, last year, uh, towards the end of the back end of the season, um, was a really close game, and unfortunately the Raiders just lost it. And also, then early in the year, um, Jared Croker's three hundredth game, not a close game, but all the Warriors blows out of the park, and uh, that was quite disappointing. So hopefully, we'll get a bit of revenge this Friday night. Yeah, it's good to have you on, Blake. It's great to have you on because um, I, I'm a big fan. I, I listen to your podcast, and I was uh, as a, a different um, fan of a different team. I still do listen to a lot of the. I like to listen to the other teams' podcasts and see, uh, get a bit of information on 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 how what's going on. So yeah, um, before getting into the game, before we get into this week's game, we'll talk about the off season. Um, how did the off season feel for you guys? Um, in, in terms of your signings or. Your, your losses, obviously, you lost Jack White in there. Is there any um, particular name that's you know stood out that was a general massive loss to you guys going the off season? Well, um, Jack White obviously was was you know yeah. a a big a big loss, um, a big name, you know, a biggest name player. Look, it's pretty disappointing that um, he decided to go to South Sydney, especially because the club you know put a big offer to keep him, but he decided you know. It wasn't so much a financial decision, but more he wanted to a different experience. He'd been at the Raiders, you know, since he was, I think, about fifteen or sixteen. So um, I think he was, I think he was pretty torn about leaving. But he decided to leave, and you know, we got used to the idea. Um, you know, it was over six months ago. I think he, you know, got announced like maybe May or something last year, April, May last year. So it was a long, it was a long time coming. Yeah. Um, the off season though, we got a couple of really good signings. For a while there, it was kind of like. Jack White's leaving, a bunch of people leaving, and we hadn't really replaced anyone. But um, in the off-season, first of all, we signed Morgan Smithies from Wigan, yeah. who's a 23-year-old um, lock forward. And he, in the first two games he's played for the Raiders, he's been outstanding. Um, just one of those really hard-working uh, 13s that tackles everything. And he, and he shifts the ball a bit as well. I think that side will, will come along. But he's been outstanding. He played 80 minutes Last week, I think he probably would have played 80 minutes week one as well. Um, but he went off with a HIA, which he then um, came back from against the Knights. But he's been outstanding. And then even closer to the season starting, um, we managed to pick up Zach Hosking um, yep. from the Panthers. And yeah. look, he's been incredible. He was matched against, um, against uh, the, in the game last week against the Tigers. And... Um, just a tremendous signing, and and back row depth um, is a real issue because Elliot Whitehead, this is going to be his last year at the club. And then yeah. we also had um, Corey had to wear a He still hasn't got a clearance to return after having that um, seizure on the field last year. So we really needed to sign yeah. um, a back row, and there weren't too many. Around. I think we went after Luciano Leilua. We've been after David Fido a lot. But, um, yeah, getting Zach Hosking's huge. So that was really encouraging. And then the other thing um, in the off-season, um, and we saw through – oh, well, KO Weeks we also signed from uh, Manly to play six. Uh, but yeah. he was in a sort of shootout with, with Ethan Strange for that spot to take over the six jumper from um, Jack White. And, he, and it's actually um, Ethan Strange, who's the youngster, who's been at the club for a couple of years, got the spot and has been playing really well too and had a huge game. Um, against the Tigers. So, yeah, no, the off-season's been good. The team's looking super fit. Um, Josh Papali, I think, lost like eight kilos. 
Jordan Rapin has lost five kilos. And then um, Xavier Savage, on the other hand, has put on heaps of size, um, looking a lot stronger. So, yeah, it's gone really well. Yeah, yeah. And um, a lot of people a lot of people in the off-season now weren't too, uh, you know, sold on the Raiders heading into this year because you guys have got a lot of um, younger, experienced and experienced players uh, there on the side. And you've lost, obviously, you lost Jack Wyden. And you, you mentioned that. Um, it, look, I don't feel Jack Wyden was met, is it really that massive a loss for you guys, actually. Um, um, do you, do well, you necessarily agree? Because I thought he had some good seasons with you then. Last yeah. season, a pretty quiet he's a great, one for him. Yeah, yeah. He's a great player, but um, he's had some ups and downs along the way. And I don't really think that he ever really was a playmaker, but he was playing six and he yes. was the main man. Look, sometimes his decision-making... Um, was not great. And look, if you look back at some of the best performances the Raiders had last year, like we went to um, Brisbane last year, I think it was about round seven or eight or something like that. And the Broncos were undefeated up to that point. And we had a really good team performance um, and Jack White wasn't playing. Uh, and that was sort of, you know, there were game times last year when we saw Jamal Fogarty sort of take more control of the side. Um, and we actually look a lot better. So that's what we've seen so far this year. Jamal Fogarty's taking control of the side. We're playing a pretty simple game plan, but Jack White is more of sort of playing what's in front of him sort of player uh, and not necessarily the best at following a game plan. And I think, you know, I sort of mentioned before um, Jared Croker's uh, 300th game against the Warriors and how it was kind of a bit of a disastrous performance for the Raiders. And it really... If you look back at that game, Jack White really was trying to do everything himself, and it just yep. didn't it didn't pan out. So, most of the commentators who say that the Raiders are going to get the wooden spoon um, because we don't have Jack White in, anymore haven't really watched the Raiders that closely. I think they knew Jack White was probably the only big name player they knew, and they well, they don't have that big name player anymore. Therefore, they're going to suck. They hadn't really seen how the Raiders played. And look, Jack White, I think, will probably do quite well at South Sydney. Because when we've yep. seen him play for New South Wales and we've seen him play for Australia and he plays in that left centre spot, he does well because he can just basically focus on running the ball hard and tackling hard. And they're the two things he's really good at. Kicking, um, deciding when to kick, you know, when to go short side, whatever else, that decision-making stuff isn't necessarily his strongest suit. So, yeah, that's why I think um, we're going pretty well so far anyway in the post Jack White era. Yeah, yeah, and um, just just looking at your 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 squad this year, who's a who's a player that you're you know that people should be keeping an eye out for, like, like a, a player to watch, like a rookie, a young yeah. player, or who do you There's reckon? Yeah, like? so one of the real things the club um, has tried to do in recent times is um, we can't sign big name players. Whenever we're in the market yeah. for a for a big name playoff contract, um, we invariably don't get them. So. The recruitment strategy in recent times has been focused on signing um, the best juniors around. And so one of the best juniors around that we've signed and we've seen, he debuted one game in the Sounds last year, but has played the first two games at six this year, is Ethan Strange, who came from the Roosters, highly credentialed 19-year-old, um, great defence. His um, strength uh, and ability to step, he's got to try last year, uh, last week stepping up his left and right foot. Um, he's definitely one to watch. And then there's a couple of others who haven't played first grade so far this year. There's a guy called Chevy Stewart who came from the yeah. Shark, who's an 18-year-old fullback. I think he'll come into fullback at some point during the season. They've started off with Rapina, and Rapina's doing a great job there, you know, despite his, his um, age at 34. Um, but I think Chevy Stewart will see later in the year coming to the side. Uh, and he's a really bright prospect. And then there's another forward, Trey Mooney, who's um, really exciting as well. So, yeah, there's, there's some good good players to come through this year. And this year, um, I think we all saw as being like a bit of a transition year. But yeah. um, hopefully it can be more. Hopefully it can be more than just that as well. Yeah, and I uh, just, just want to go back on uh, last season uh, for you guys. Um, there was a, There's a lot of games where you guys... Um, one by one to twelve. Um, you, you don't look, win too many games. Fooding plus, uh, you, you not got a single. In, you got a, single game. Yeah. yeah, not a single game. Not yeah, a game. well, yeah. 
Yeah, that, it's, it's it was it's crazy that you guys got in there. On, on we've, a already minus... won, we've already had two. Yep. 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 Yeah, we've already had two 13 plus victories. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and I think that is more like. I mean, we've only played so far the Knights, who are probably a bit disappointing, and the yeah. Tigers. But I think the fact that we've won 13 plus um, so far this year is almost more testament to improved defence mm. than it yeah. is um, improved attack necessarily. Um, obviously, the team worked a lot on defence in the off season, as every team says they did. But we had a change in coaching. So Michael Maguire was in charge of the defence last year. He's left. Yeah. Um, Raiders. He's left the Raiders and the Kiwis. He's just going to be New South Wales coach. And we brought in a guy called Justin Giddo, who was the coach of the New South Wales Cup team last year to work on defence. And then also I think having um, Morgan Smithies come in and play that 13 role has really tightened up the defence. And also um, Zach Hosking on uh, the right edge has been really good defensively as well. So, yeah, it's improved defence, I think, is one of the reasons why um, we're going to win more games this year, I think. Yeah, and what 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 are you like expecting from this year? Like, what are your expectations going to, going into this season? Like, we're two games in now, obviously. Um, well, what are your expectations like for the rest of the twenty twenty four season? Like, is making the finals a must for the Raiders? Or, I think I think we can definitely make the finals. It probably yeah. comes down to um, whether or not um, Jamal Fogarty stays fit. Yeah, it, it it really hinges on him this year. I mean, we've got a great forward pack and then we've got you know a guy who's um got a wonderful kicking game that hasn't been that much talk um about his kicking game generally but um that game against the tigers last week he was putting up bombs that were you know in the, the matt burton um level and probably actually kicking the ball a bit more consistently than than matt burton so um yeah i think if jamal fogarty stays fit um and you know we have yeah. Pretty good luck with injuries otherwise as well. I think we can definitely make the finals. And, you know, there's probably a couple of teams um, we might struggle with. But I think, you know, outside of the top two or three teams, I think we can can match it with anyone. And the Warriors um, this Friday will be a real test. But uh, yeah. be, I'm really interested to see how we match up against the Warriors because, you know, the Warriors are one of the better teams um, in the comp without doubt. Yeah, just uh, I want to give a quick, uh, answer on this question here for you um, before we get into the, the game this week. Um, Jose is asking here, who's the Raiders' biggest rivalry with, with like, which team? That's a hard one to say. It used to be, for a long yeah. time there, it was the draft. And then I think we've had a pretty yep. big rivalry with the Melbourne Storm. Um, yep. And we've, you know, been had a lot of success in Melbourne in recent times, which almost, no, well, more success in Melbourne than any other clubs had. Um, yeah, so I... I'd say Melbourne and the, the Dragons there for a while, but yeah, it's always we seem to um, seem to have a few, but none, no one in particular. Yeah, but um, yeah, we'll get into the game now. So Friday night, uh, it's, uh, the Warriors take on the Raiders, and this game's in Christchurch. Um, oh, uh, we'll get into the team list first. So I'll go through the team list. So. Um, Blake, if you you got you know the Raiders team on you, can you go for the Raiders team and I'll go for uh, the Warriors? I don't team. have it on me, but I, I can I can tell it to you. Off the top of my head, yeah. So pull back, yeah. Rapina, doing a great job there. Um, we really saw when he went to fullback at the end of last year, he really unlocked yeah. our sort of stuttering attack a bit. Seb Chris did a good job there, but he didn't have a lot of ball playing, whereas. Rapana um, is a maniac and he'll throw himself at everything, but then he also is quite good at ball playing on the short sides. Um, on the wings, Nick Kotrick comes back into the side with Seb Chris out with a HIA. And on the other wing is Albert Hopawade. In the centres, uh, um, sorry, Nick Kotrick on one wing, right. Xavier Savage is on the other. Yeah. Albert Hopawade has gone to um, left centre with Matt Timiko at right centre, who obviously... New Zealand Warriors fans would know. It's, it was great to see that he got his um, his yeah. New Zealand Test debut um, in the off season. Did a great job, and I think he's going to be New Zealand's right centre for a long, long time because he just seems to get better and better all the time. Uh, in the halves, we've got um, Ethan Strange at six, Jamal Fogarty at seven, front row um, Joseph Tarpany and Josh Papali'i with um, Daddy Levi. 
doing a good job there at um, at Hooker. Quite a few Kiwis in the team. I think there's five yeah. in total. Uh, then in good. the back row, Elliot Whitehead returns to the team this week, which um, I would have preferred to see him get yeah. picked on the back as opposed to going straight to right back row because Hosking's been doing such a good job there. Then there's um, Hudson Young in the back row. Lockie in the scrum said before, Morgan Smithies from the UK. Then on the bench, um, Tom Starling, Pasami Solo, Zach Hosking, and Emery Gula. Awesome. So we'll go for the Warriors team here. So fullback, Tane, Tawapiki, uh, Dallin Watini, Zalesniak, EWZ, uh, Rocco Berry, centres with RTS, Roger Tuvas, Sheik, Marcelo Montoya on the other wing. Uh, Luke Metcalf recently re signed Luke Metcalf on a two year deal. He's a 5'8, and Sean Johnson's the halfback. And for Noah Blake prop. And uh, this week, uh, Wade Egan has been named. So um, it'll be interesting to see if he uh, does line up for this game because last week he was ruled out. Um, he was named last week against the Storm and then he was ruled out late. So uh, it will be interesting to see if he um, gets, gets um, lines up on, on game day. Uh, Mitchell Barnett, Prop, Jackson Ford in the second row with Kurt Capewell. And uh, Tolu Harris, Captain and Lock there. Benches, Freddie Lussick, Tom Harley, Bunty of and Dylan Walker. And the reserves, Adam Pompey, Jess Devonga, Tamari Martin, Jacob Laban, and Shana Harris Davida there. So that's the team. So what what are your thoughts here? Just looking at those teams. Um look at your 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 team there, the Raiders, and uh looking at the Warriors team. What are your what are your thoughts on, on the on the sides that have been named here? Well, Warriors, very good team. Um, Adafanu yep. Blake is obviously one of the best props in the game. But I think that if we have a strength, or if we, I think we've got two potential strengths over the Warriors. Um, yep. One is overall on the back, and then in the in in the bench as well. Um, Adafanu Blake is huge. Um, he'll play fifty or sixty minutes, but in the time that he's off the field, I think there's an opportunity for us to. Um, Get a bit of ascendancy in the forwards, and then mm. just you know, really um, will rely on on Jamal Fogarty's kicking game. So kicking to the corners, and also monster bombs. But obviously, yeah, Warriors heaps of strike um, in that back line. I mean, Sean Johnson's a player that's given us a lot of grief over the years. Kicked a lot of field goals actually against the Raiders in tight yeah. games. And, um, RTS as well has always been huge against us and. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of talent um, in you know DWZ as well, and you know, yeah, Metcalf so speedy um, caused his grief at Geo last year in the the Croakers 300th game. So there's there's a lot of strike in the Warriors team. It's going to be very tough, but I think the Raiders do have a chance of pulling off the um, upset. We're quite rank outsiders in the betting, but um, an interesting yeah. stat I saw picked up during the week, um, yep. is that Warriors' record outside yeah. of Auckland and New Zealand is really bad. Mm, they have a yeah. percentage in Auckland of 60%. Um, outside of Auckland, it goes down to 30%. And at the four times the Warriors have played in Christchurch, they've lost three and won only one. So... It's not as much. I mean, the Raiders have to travel further, but the Warriors still have to travel to the South Island. It's not quite the home advantage yeah. that they have when they play in Auckland. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, obviously, as Warriors fan, we know that for years that our record away from our, you know Auckland, in particular, is, is not really strong. Like, I think for a number of years, like we've generally been pretty good at Mount Smart, but when we tra- like play out of Mount Smart, we don't seem to win um, those games. So, yeah, look, I mean, look, I give the Raiders a massive chance. Like, I really do. I feel like, you know, we go into this game, obviously we, we want to bounce back from that from that heartbreaking loss to the Storm. And um, I'm feel, I feel like the boys will definitely be up for it this week. Um, they'll be definitely motivated to, to oh, get yeah. the win because, yeah. you know, that, that, that still stings. It's definitely going to sting in, at training during the week and, yeah, it, it, it crossed their minds like they should have won that game, but that's that's why I see. And Jose is saying here, everyone wrote the Raiders off. Um, watching the Raiders play like contenders has been awesome. Yeah, even though it's only the first two games, but they've been really impressive. So you can't you can't um, 
write the Raiders off in this game. I really, I don't think you can because, the, you know, R Ricky Stewart, I know I'm not a big Ricky Stewart fan, I'm going to admit it. Um, he, um, he always gets his team up, you know. Yeah. I, that's the only thing. I, I, I do like the Raiders, but I just, I'm, not, I'm not a big Ricky Stewart fan. I'm just going to admit it. But, um, yeah, look, um, I know everyone, all, all Raiders fans love Ricky Stewart, you know. Every Raiders fan. There's him, plenty of Raiders obviously. fans that love Ricky Stewart, right? Um, yeah. And yes. I know it's perfect, but him coming back to the Raiders yeah. was the yeah. best thing that, the last 10 years, the best thing that's happened in the club. Because prior to him yeah. coming back, we didn't look like, you know, going anywhere near the premiership. And in 2019, we were so close. And look, he's, yeah. he's really built the club up again. And there's, there's a lot of pride in the club and these he's attracted players that other coaches um, wouldn't have been able to attract. So yeah, I think it, I think he's done a tremendous job. Is he perfect? Of course not. But um, yeah, we're a lot better with him than we would be if I, I don't know where we'd be if, if he hadn't come back. So yeah, he's he's definitely he's definitely done a good job. Like the Raiders uh, when they made that uh, grand final um, yeah. a couple of years ago, you know that was that was a huge surprise. It was like um, it was probably their biggest opportunity. I think I felt like it was, was their biggest opportunity. And I know uh, Raiders fans don't, you know, want to relive that game because there's a bit of heart right there against the Roosters. But yeah. um, yeah, like that was that was a huge moment for the Raiders and an opportunity probably to win the premiership. And unfortunately, they lost yeah. to the Roosters. So you know, yeah, made the prelim again the following year, and then yeah, we've looked yeah. made in the time that Ricky's been back at the club which this yeah. is his 10th year now we've made three prelims and you know the finals a couple of other times as well so it's, it's it, although we haven't won the premiership he's definitely done a good job yeah definitely so um yeah look like i like i said there and jose is saying you both teams will definitely show up yeah for sure they will definitely show yeah. up and, and and it's a massive game because i feel like i'll i'll probably say um I feel like this is sort of a must-win for the Warriors in a way because um, next week they got the Knights at home, um, and they don't want to be going into that game zero and zero and three. And zero and three is yeah. not an ideal start to the season. So, no. um, I feel like we, no. we need the to get this win. Good. Yeah, the Warriors are too good a team to be zero and three. You would think, yeah. um, and if the Raiders were to lose, I certainly wouldn't be the end of the world for us. But yeah, I, I think. I think it's going to be very close, and I think it'll it'll come down could come down to like a referee call or a big moment or something like that. Yeah, well, hope, hopefully nothing controversial. Um, there always tends yeah. to be a controversial decision uh, in an NRL game, so hopefully, yeah. hopefully not. But um, hopefully it's fairly ref for both sides, both ways, and not one one way or the other. So yeah, yeah. But, well, um, last, year, last year at. Um, the, the game at, at, at Mount Smart, um, yeah. there was the one where um, Seb Chris got whacked across the face and oh. dropped the ball. And it was called, it was called, you know, it was no penalty try. So we felt pretty um, hardly done by that, that one. And also, too, uh, yeah, we just before it went to Golden Point, we had a chance to win the game, actually. And that, that was a classic Jack White moment where he um, scored the try out wide and he just did the big swan dive and he didn't really think about um, maybe trying to take it in a bit further and making the kick a bit easier. So can do brilliant things, but yeah, sometimes not the smartest player on the field. I think you could say. Yeah. Just, just, just looking at your, your team. And I feel like, um, uh, last, last, the first two games, um, Jordan Rapana, I thought was, um, pretty good, actually pretty outstanding. Our first two games. And there were some sort of question marks and doubts whether Rapana would play this well the first two games, but, uh, what, what are your thoughts here on, on Jordan Rapanis? Um, he's playing fullback. I generally see him oh, on the wing. Yeah. Yeah, no, he's. I love him. He's got a fullback. He went to the fullback, like I said, yeah. uh, towards the back end last year, and immediately we looked a better team. And um, yes. he's actually, you know, he's lost weight. He's had a he's had a proper preseason because a lot of the players like um, like Rapana and Papali and stuff in the past hadn't really had proper seasons, but um. Rapana um, retired from the Kiwi squad at the end of last year. It wasn't really made much of a big deal of at the time, but then he, he came out and said, yeah, he chose yep. down. So he had a proper preseason and he's he's in really, really good shape. And um, yeah, he's he's just, he's one of those players that Raiders fans absolutely love. 
and isn't necessarily popular with um, some other clubs. But uh, he absolutely, <laughs> yes. he absolutely gives his all, you know. And and sometimes he has an error in him, but he, whenever he has an yeah. e error in him, it's through trying, you know. He's a, he's an absolute effort player. He never um, switches off or doesn't compete, or you know, he always he always gives his all. Actually, in the last couple of games, though, he got had to go off with the HIA last week after he got hit in the neck by Adam Caesar, um, and then the week before they had to actually move him to the wing because he was cramping up because. You know he he puts in so much effort, but he's not a young man. But they've got Savage. You know the, we've got um, Savage or Papawati who can go back to fullback and you know cover him. Yeah. You know in the back. Yeah. Of the well, I wouldn't be surprised it happens again this week. It may happen most games. I think. Yeah, and um, Matthew Tomoko, big big fan of him, real big fan of him. Uh, albeit a Kiwi as well. Oh, uh, such, yeah. Such great player. Yeah, such a great player, a great guy, just um, wonderful personality. He's at, at the games at um, Canberra Stadium. He's always the one that's off the field last. He's out there signing every autograph for every kid. And, and yeah, just just an awesome, awesome player and, and um, just, you know, runs so hard, makes so many tough metres and carries. And I think, again, he's like leaning, um, he's like on the top five metre makers um, for the comp. And like he's not a fullback. Most of the leading run makers, uh, meter makers in the comp, usually are fullbacks because they have so many returns, but he takes these tough carries and just makes so many meters every time. Yeah, well, what well, what is your thoughts on uh, Nick Patrick? Because um, he's, um, his form has been a little bit down, isn't it? The Terrible. Years. Terrible. Absolutely yeah. Terrible. Um, I'm not sure what the goal is there. Back yeah. to the Raiders, he's been really, um, he's been really, yeah. really disappointing. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. He's got all he's got all the um the the physical gifts in the world, you know, and 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 burst into the side as a young man and played for New South Wales and and played for Australia and and since coming back to the Raiders after he went to the Bulldogs for one year, he just hasn't been the same player. And it, it's been frustrating. And um, he gets the ball and and runs more meters sideways than he does forwards. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with him. But he's yeah. this is his last year. Of um, a pretty big money yep. uh, contract that he's on, um, and I don't know whether he'll still be at the Raiders next year. To be honest with you, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes to the UK or somewhere else because they're not going to re-sign yeah. him on the same money that he's on because he just hasn't, um, unfortunately, um, you know, been doing the business. Yeah, and he he went to the he went to the Bulldogs for a bit there, and he didn't do too well there, and he came back to, nah, to well, you guys. Well, he went to the Bulldogs when they were like really struggling. Yeah. Had one year. Yeah. Then Gus took over, and I think Gus was pretty keen to um, get him out because he, he went there on about 600 grand a year. So then he came back to the Raiders, but I think the Warriors were like, you know, um, the Warriors, the Bulldogs were um, chipping in. But yeah, this is the last year of his deal. So I, I don't think, yeah, I don't think he'll be, he'll be still at the club. If he stays at the club next year, um, he'll have to be prepared to take a pretty big pay cut because there's always, there's like other wingers, yeah. you know, that'll come in and do the job. So, yeah, yeah. it's sad because he's a Canberra guy too. He's a local junior, you know, but it's just, just something's not right. Something hasn't been going right there the last couple of years. And he's yeah. only back. As in I just... yeah. He's only back in this the team this week because Seb Chris um, got KO'd in the game last week and has been stood down for 11 days. Yeah, just seeing in the chat here, Jacko. Here's here. So good to see you in the chat. Hope you're doing well, Jacko. But um, yeah, just uh, just just by another, another question on, on your team list. There, I've seen um that uh, Morgan Smithies. Um, what was what what is your impressions of him so far? Because um, the first two games, man, absolutely. He's, he's, oh, yeah, he's he's been great. I, 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 uh, from the UK, yeah. there you came over from the UK and. Ricky loves to get a few British guys over there, doesn't he? He loves loves yeah. um, some yeah. of those British players. Yeah, and the, the British players that tend to come over and do well um, are yeah. the really hardworking forwards, which what he is. He's just he's just an all yeah. effort, eighty minute in the middle. He played in the um, the Super League Grand Final, and he didn't get the man of the match. But a lot of people said that he was. He played eighty minutes, made fifty five tackles. Last week for the Raiders again, eighty minutes, like forty tackles. He's just one of those guys that um, 
really leads. He's a big talker on the field, leads the the defensive line. And yeah, no, he's he's proved to be a fantastic signing. And really excited yeah. to have him. Hopefully he sticks around long term. So I think he signed for a few years. So he's only young. He's only just, I think, 23. So hopefully he stays the clock for a long time. Yep, and uh, just just looking at the uh, the hooker, uh, Danny Danny Leroy. Would you, would you say you'd prefer Danny Leroy starting over Tom Starling because he's got Tom Starling yeah, so, in the fourteen? So, yeah, yeah. So Tom Starling is yeah. really good at coming on when the games open up a bit. His service yeah. is not his strongest feature of his of his play, but um, he, you know he's super quick and super energetic, and he's come on sort of the back end last twenty minutes, the last couple of games. And done really well. Yeah, it's been, been a lot of sort of the debate was which hooker starts, whether it's a battle between Danny Levi and um, Zach Wolford, son of Raiders legend Simon Wolford. And um, Danny Levi barely played last year, but now he's 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 come inside. He's done really well the first two weeks, and he's um, super fit and leads the defensive line well. And his services, you know, he's not the most creative hooker. In the comp, but he does he does a decent job. So yeah, pretty pretty happy with how he's going. Yep, and um, you've already uh, really actually given the, your thoughts here on, on Ethan Strange, but he um his his uh, his uh, dad is a, is a is a coach of the NRLW. So is that right? Um, I'm pretty sure is um. Yeah, the Roosters. Or, yeah, his, his yeah, coach the Roosters, Roosters. Yeah, I thought I thought I heard of the name it, before. So yeah, and his sister plays, I think, for the Knights. <laughs> Yeah. NRLW, yes, a very strong um, league family. But yeah, he's he's got a massive, massive future. Like a tough kid, um, yeah, really committed. And his his footwork is unbelievable. Yeah, he did. Re- he played in the centres for um, New South Wales in the like under twenties State of Origin game last yeah. last year. He got a hat trick. Yeah, in the centres. And yeah, it was man of the match. Yeah, and um, how is it? He, is it he, this year? Is he only been at Canberra this year, or was he at Canberra last year as well? Because was he been at he, there for for a while? No, I think he came in twenty twenty two, or maybe the start of last year. Yeah, either twenty twenty two or the start of last year. And he started. So he started off playing juniors, and then he moved up to New South Wales Cup last year, and then he played yep. one game. Um, in the centres last year of, of first grade when we played the Storm, but we got absolutely belted. So he didn't have he didn't have yeah. you know the greatest debut, but yeah. Yeah. So just uh, what 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 do you reckon? Just looking at these key battles and uh, matchups, you you think you're, you're excited for for this game because um, uh, well, it's a biggest, very good. The, yeah. the biggest one is the battle up front. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah. Jay Tarpany. And Josh Papali versus uh, AFB. That's I think that's what the game will come down to. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if Papa maybe comes off the bench this week, and maybe Emre Gula starts because I think that we will, what the game plan will be will be to um, match it with AFB, and then maybe try and get on top when he's has a spell. So I don't know. I, I looked. He played like fifty minutes last week against the Storm, which is I kind of normally thought last year maybe he'll put minutes will build up as the season goes on. But I thought generally he was playing like bigger minutes than that last year, maybe closer to sixty minutes. So yeah, I think that 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 battle though, AFB versus probably Jay Tarpany it'll be is is the one I'm looking forward to the most. Yeah, and uh, obviously you've got the two young young five eights there, and Ethan Strange and Luke and Luke Bidcalf. Yeah, and you got. The Johnson, Sean Johnson is just uh, Jamal Fogarty as well. So two um two half picks there. So uh, the four pack, I think the four packs um evenly matched, I feel. Um I think it's a good battle between the Fords. You got Barney at Ford, Noah Blake, Kate Well. Yeah. Barnett and then you got to be honest with you, Barnett. Barnett is yeah. tough, right? Yeah, but yes, I don't yeah. rate him as a starting prop. I don't rate him as a starting yeah. prop, and that's what look that's I think, tough. you know. Um, and then apart from that, on 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 the um, bench, you guys have got, you know, Joey Lussick and Lussick. Uh, yep. Walker, and yep. Bundy Afoa is really the only other prop that you guys have. 
Yeah. Uh, so that's why I think we can get the. That's why I think if the Raiders have an advantage anywhere, it's in the forwards. Like Mitch Barnett um, is tough, you know, but he's not that big, and I don't really rate him as a, as a starting as a starting prop. So, and it'll be interesting. Like next year when AFB leaves, I mean, the, the Warriors. Yeah. Oh. He cut off a bit. I think he cut off. Are you still here? Um Yeah, so yeah, look, um looking at our bench, um, I feel like we've got the I feel like the Rays do have a strong bench. Um as for the Warriors, our bench is pretty um Oh, this, that's a shame he cut off. Maybe it was his internet. Um, or just wait till he comes back, if he does come back. Um, I'm not too sure what happened there. Maybe maybe a bit of uh, internet issues there on his end. Um, so, yeah, what I was going to say now. Okay, so, yeah, look. Um, for this game, um, definitely the key for me, it's going to be the Warriors. Um, four pack, especially. I think the four pack will be the key in this one. And um, the interest is going to be whether Wade Egan starts this game or will we see Freddie Lussick start? Will we see Freddie Lussick start if Wade Egan's not ready? I think that would probably be the case if Egan is not playing. And uh, maybe Harris Tavita coming off the bench as well, maybe get a spot on the bench um, for the Warriors there. But that's that's going to be really interesting to see what happens um, in that sort of um, department. But... um. Yeah, guys, if you've got any questions, feel free to put the questions in the comments because it um, looks like we've lost our guest there, um, which is um, maybe it's a bit of a internet issues on his end or something. So hopefully he comes back. But if you guys got any questions, feel free to share them in the in the live chat. Uh, make sure you like the live stream as well. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new, if you haven't done so already. Um, but... Uh, yeah, hopefully he comes back soon. So fingers crossed he comes back soon. But um, oh gosh, what? So just 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 want to go back and uh, look at the stats. So we'll look at the stats here. Uh, head to head stats since 1998. Uh, both of these teams have played 46 times. Uh, the Warriors have won 23, and the Raiders have won 23. So it's even at 23 all. Um, and uh, the last previous meetings. So the previous meetings was the Warriors uh, 21 to 20 over the Canberra Raiders um, on the 21st of July, 2023. And Friday, the 9th of June, 2023, where the Warriors won 36 to 14. So the Warriors won their two matchups between the Raiders last week, uh, last year. Sorry, they won it last year, the two matchups. And um, the Raiders obviously starting the season pretty well, two and zero. The Warriors need to get a win to desperately um, um, get um, on track on the on the um, on the ladder, and I think it's a crucial game for the Warriors. I know it's only round round three, um, but the Warriors really need to get this win. So fingers crossed it happens. Um, yeah. So in regards to this game, well, look. Um, I'm going to tip the Warriors here to win this game. Now, for me, I'll probably say Warriors. Oh, we'll go Warriors one to twelve. And uh, anytime try screwers will say Dullin, Watini, Zalesniak, and Marcelo Mortoy and RTS as well. So, uh, Warriors one to twelve for me. And um, yeah, I feel like they will get the victory um, in this game over the Raiders. And um, yeah. Oh, I think they will get the win. We really need to get the win. And um, it is a big game Friday night down there at Christchurch Apollo Projects Stadium. So, guys, I'm not too sure what happened there. I think um, our guest uh, was um, cut off. Maybe it was an internet connection. So uh, I do want to fake Blake, fake Blake for coming on. Um, maybe I'll give him a bit more time. We'll see. Actually, I'll, I'll give him a few more minutes and see if he can does rejoin, but it doesn't look like he will. So, um, yeah, so that probably wraps up the preview, guys. So I appreciate Blake for coming on and coming on and giving us his thoughts for the Raiders-Warriors game. 
Um, please go and check out Blake and the Porks Canberra Raiders podcast. Um, it's on Apple and uh, Apple iTunes and Spotify and all the podcasting platforms. And you can follow their stuff on uh, Instagram and Twitter. Um, X, you can go and follow Blake and the Pork podcast. So go and follow them there. But I think that pretty much wraps it up. Um, yeah, I, I think this wraps it up because it doesn't look like he's rejoining. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, it's not, he's not rejoining. Okay, so, guys, that wraps it up. Please make sure you like the live stream and subscribe to the channel if you're new. And thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. And, um, yeah, I'll see you guys all in the next one. Have a good one. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Do all the following. And, um, yeah, we'll see you all in the next one. Have a good one. Up the wires. Looking forward to the game Friday night. And... Fingers crossed the boys can finally get the win uh, that I think they really deserved over the first two games of the season. So hopefully they can get the job done in Christchurch and, um, yeah, get the W. But cheers, everyone, for watching, um, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Cheers. Have a good one.